Hi, this is Nathan from Aimed Research, and in this video I'm going to show you how to synchronize your Kronos camera with an external source. In this case, we're going to be using a dual channel function generator. One like this you can find on the internet for under $100 new. There will be a link in the description below where you can potentially source one of these. Typically, you're going to be connecting to this BNC trigger one input. If you needed to use additional trigger inputs for an advanced setup, you can get one of these connectors here at the link in the description below as well. So the next thing that we have to do is set up the camera settings. So we're going to first go into the trigger IO settings. We're going to change it from record end trigger and make sure that this is in the BNC um, trigger one input box. You see that here in the, in the various versions of the soft camera software, this, this screen might change a little bit how it looks, but you're going to look for the trigger one input for the basic BNC trigger. You're going to choose shutter gating in this case. That shutter gating means that the external source is going to not only provide the frame rate, dictate the frame rate of the camera, but the exposure as well. So you're frequency, your pulse frequency is going to be your frame rate and your pulse width or duty cycle is going to be the exposure. So we're going to take the invert off, make sure debounce is unchecked. You can apply your settings and choose OK. Now the next thing that we're going to do is go in and change our record settings. It's important to note that your external signal source is going to dictate your frame rate. That is your actual frame rate, is what your signal source is providing. The thing that we have to be concerned about here is the frame rate. So this is not going to be your actual frame rate. So in this case I have 1001 frames per second. We want the camera to be scanning or looking for pulses faster than what the signal generator will be providing them. Because if, if the camera is not looking for pulses fast enough, it may miss a pulse. So in, in that case, it would be missing a frame of the video. So we have our signal generator. We intend to set it up at 1,000 kilohertz or 1,000 frames per second. So we're going to set this to a frame or two higher than the input signal. The exposure does not matter what it is because it's going to be controlled by the external source since we selected shutter gating. So in this case we hit OK and we're pretty much done on this end. So next here at our function generator notice I have the cable disconnected. Again the reason for this is that you may accidentally change your amplitude voltage and damage your camera. So we're just going to keep it the way it is right now so you see here, top line, channel 1, square wave on. So if you have an issue with changing the channel, that will toggle it on and off. Okay, so this says 1 kilohertz. So that is our actual frame rate, and the camera will capture 1 kilohertz if the camera is looking for or scanning for uh, faster faster than that signal. So we, we had the camera set to 1,001 frames per second. F2 here. So next input, 5 volts. We don't want to change that. That could damage the camera if you increase that voltage. And then offset, it's not necessary to change that as well. Duty cycle. This is going to be your exposure. So, for instance, if you have a thousand frames per second, one kilohertz, up here in the top line, and this duty cycle is set to 50%, that means that your exposure is going to be, or your pulse width, in this case, the invert was selected off in the trigger I.O. settings, so it's going to be capturing a signal when it's active high, okay? So in this case, if it's 50% active high, then 50% of 1,000 hertz is going to be 
half a millisecond, 0 0.0005 seconds for an exposure. Okay, for instance, if we change this to, whoops, if we change this to a duty cycle of 10%, your image will be darker, you have less motion blur, and you are going to be active high for 10% of your frequency. So in this case, 10% of 1,000 hertz is going to be 0 0.0001 seconds, or a tenth of a millisecond. And then your next line down here is your phase angle. The phase angle is not necessary unless, of course, you're dealing with multiple signals. Um, if you're going to be providing a signal to two cameras, the phase angle would be important. Um, we're going to disregard that right now. So just having a phase angle of zero degrees is sufficient. So before you walk away from your function generator, make sure that your amplitude is at 5 volts and your offset voltage is zero. Before I go back to the camera live view, I want to show you just simply that you want to make sure your channel one is on. So a lot of times there's a LED to illuminate that. And your cable is going right to the trigger one input. Okay, so now I have the function generator connected to the camera. And we're running, you can see that we have some zebra lines here that shows that we're overexposed. Notice my exposure here, 994 microseconds. Notice that whenever I change that exposure on the camera, it does nothing. And that's simply because the exposure is controlled by the signal generator. So right now I have the signal generator set for 20% duty cycle. So that would be 0.0002 seconds for an exposure. I'm going to change that down to a 10% duty cycle. So as you can see, that change just remedied the zebra lines and the overexposure. <clears throat> now, you have to have a si signal going to your camera to do a black calibration. So, I'm going to perform a black calibration. If you do not have a signal going to your camera from the function generator with these settings, you may not be able to appropriately perform a black calibration. Now I want to demonstrate to you what would happen if your signal generator was providing a signal that is faster than what the camera can see. So right now we're at one kilohertz signal into the camera and in our record settings, we have the camera set up for 1,001, which is essentially the scan rate for the camera. Now I'm going to change the camera frame rate to a higher value. And you'll notice as I change it to a higher value, we're going to see lines appear on the screen. So as you can see, there's lines here, here, here. The camera cannot keep up with the signal being input. So in this case, if you see any artifacts like that, that means that your camera is not set to scan fast enough for the input signal. That could mean that you could increase the frame rate on the camera, or you could decrease the frequency of the function generator. So now we have our signal back to 1,000 kilohertz. So we're going to simply record a simple video here. Now if we hit record, it's going to continue to record. Record, record, it's gonna wait for a stop signal. In this case, we'd have to hit it you know, on, on camera. I hit the red button on the top and it's done. So if we look, 
scanning through, right? We're getting each frame, no missing frames. The fan blades aren't jumping ahead faster than, you know, one increment of, right? So that's pretty much it. That's how to synchronize one camera to a function generator. I'll be providing a, another video to show how you can utilize a function generator to control two cameras and have them operating at different, different frequencies or the same frequency, such as 1,000 frames per second for one camera, 1,000 frames per second for another camera, but have them capturing frames at a different time which could allow you to increase your frame rate with a two-camera system.